say that there are a lot of fractures, you can't say there are not a lot of fractures. And though, you know, the, that piece of information is vital really to the assessment of the risk. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Smith. Yeah, thanks very much uh, to all of you for your presentations. But I have to say that I was very sceptical about this whole process uh, before we start, and I have already questioned the legitimacy of going down this road. I'm even more sceptical now, having heard both your presentations, because what's coming back to me from both of you, um, um, Ms. Dr. Crow and Mr. Hooper, is that you keep questioning if ever, and maybe sometime, and if we do have to, and should we have to reconsider, and we don't have the evidence, and isn't that unfortunate? Um, and you have said, we are where we are, and you have said, we don't have the proper evidence to be able to say definitively, and Ireland is different. So I get a real strong sense from both of you, without you saying it, that you would hedge your bets that we might be able to someday revisit the question of uh, fracking shale gas in this country and that therefore this research that has been done by uh, CDM Smith, albeit that you're a pro-fracking company working in conjunction with a state body that's tasked with protecting our environment, which includes our water and our population, um, and I see a, a big compromise uh, in that relationship, albeit that that's where you are both coming from. I get the impression that you sort of regret the decision of the Doyle uh, in, uh, uh, before Christmas to head for banning fracking in Ireland. And I would like you to comment on that in a genuine way as scientists and as people who are interested in, in the industry. Um, because I am very concerned that we are going through this process for a different kind of reason. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I find it extraordinary that we're going through this process of listening to both of you report back on something that we have rejected. Democratically, we have rejected the idea of uh, fracking and we are supposed to be moving on to another stage. Earlier on, we had the legal opinion, which was basically, uh, t you know, advising us around some interesting things to do with language, to do with how you describe the state, how you describe land, whether we would have to link this into amendments to previous bills in the 60s to do with petroleum. And, and that's the sort of advice we need to hear as an Oireachtas committee to move this thing on. And I am suspicious that it is going to get dragged out. And I am suspicious that there's a regret on behalf of the industry that there isn't a door left open uh, to bring uh, fracking into this country. And at this point, I do really have to thank and to um, give credit to the people in the gallery and their communities, because they've produced this body of work, which is thousands and thousands of petitions. They they have gone through all of the research into this body of work, which is from the state of New York, the uh, Governor Cuomo uh, research, and they have also, because of their activity, meant that this bill was on the floor of the doll. Deputy McLaughlin is a local deputy of the Fine Gael party, and that bill would not have been on the floor of the doll were it not for the rank and file, ordinary, decent farmers and citizens of the people who live with the potential danger of their, their environment being destroyed. And it is a potential danger. You both admitted it. We don't know enough. But for me, as a member of this committee, which deals with climate change and the environment, the the key question is, why would we want to take it out of the ground in the first place? If we're hurtling towards climate change and we're bound by the Paris uh, Agreement to reduce, uh, seriously reduce our emissions, um, our carbon emissions within the next 20 to 30 years, this proposal flies in the face of the idea that a committee uh, you know, of the state, elected by the people, that's looking after the issue with climate change, would even consider the idea of extracting more fossil fuel from the ground, leave it in there, protect the environment and the people who live within it, and look at alternative ways of producing energy. And I would hope that at the end of the day, my suspicions about the industry wanting to leave a little chink open that maybe this won't get through, or we could hopefully revisit in the future, is utterly and totally misguided and wrong. And I'd like to hear from you Thank that you. that is the case, because for me, the key thing is we need to deal with climate change and we need to deal with the protection of the environment and any idea of shale gas uh, becoming part of an industry in this country flies absolutely in the face of that. Thank you. I bring in Deputy Ken.